On this edition of Muskoka Central TV, we're going to install one of these rail crew uh, magnetic uncouplers. Um, it's got an on-off remote, and it, uh, I'm going to put it in the in the track section right here, um, so that I could switch cars in and out of this siding here or the the siding beside it. Um, when it's on, the magnet is very strong. It has a good uh, delayed action. Um, so you could back up cars over it, um, pull out, and then with delayed uncoupling, you can push them into the siding and they're not going to be coupled. Um, and then you can also turn these on and off with uh, the assistance of a, a toggle switch. Let's take a look at what comes in the package. Um, this is from Rapido. As you can see here from Rapido. Get the full instructions, some brackets to hold the uncoupler in in place. This sits under the uncoupler. It's actually making a weird sound right now. Don't know why it's doing that. Um, comes with a wiring harness. Just push pull connectors so you put your wires in there, and then this <clears throat> this connector hooks up to the uncoupler from below. And then your wiring harness goes over to here. Uh, you get your comes in with the on-off switch um, and some screws. Also an LED and a resistor to hook up the LED and a little panel that's going to go on your control panel. And then this tool is an alignment tool uh, for underneath. Um, I guess you can drill a hole in the track and line it up with this from below something. Anyways, it's mentioned on, on the uh, instructions here. So this is one of the encouplers that I already installed. This one I did a uh, top load um, installation before I put the track in. I was able to drill the hole from the top and insert it that way and then install the harness from the bottom. So. You can see right now it's not on, so there's no uncoupling action between these two cars. And up here on the panel, throw the switch. It's a very bright blue LED that comes with it. And also, you can see a little LED lights up on the uncoupler and that tells you when it's active and exactly where it's located. You can see the couplers should open up now. It's a very strong magnet. You see it actually pulled the car into place. And then now you can do a delayed action. The couplers stay apart. You can push them into the siding and pull away. You can see how strong that magnet is, the couplers really throw to the side. Now you can pick up the car. I'm just driving over it and it uncouples. But if we turn it off again, and then there's no more uncoupling action between the cars. So, in this installation, we're going to be doing a below the track, since I already have the track installed, uh, we're going to be drilling up from below with a hole saw. Now one thing they don't give you that you're going to require is a one and three quarter inch hole saw. And you drill a small pilot hole first um, to position it, and then we're going to drill from below and try and just break through the wood and then I'm going to do the uh, just by hand um, gently round the the hole saw uh, to get through the cork and try and remove that without damaging the ties or the track below this. We'll see how that goes. This is the first time I'm trying a below the track installation where the tracks already installed. If I do end up damaging the track I'm just going to take this piece out. It's a short section of track um, and just uh, replace it. But we're going to try and do it 
um, without damaging the track. So it's kind of hard to see where the hole is, but uh, anyways, it's going right here. Now the thickness of my wood is three quarters of an inch. And so what I've done is on the hole saw, I've marked off three quarters of an inch on the, on the bit so I know when I've gotten through there. Now, there is a problem with this hole saw is that the, the centering bit um, sticks up probably, I'd say three eighths of an inch above the teeth on the outer ring and so this is going to damage the ties a little bit uh, before this gets through the um, plywood. Let's see how we do. I've already gotten through almost all the way. Okay, I think that's through. I see daylight there. Yeah, it's actually getting into the ties. Problem is the glue from the ballast is uh, holding the wood uh, up. I'm going to um, pry that out a little bit and uh, from the top and, and disconnect the ties and uh, see if I can save the ties. Okay, you can see the hole there now. See the light coming through the hole. Um, it came out pretty good. I was able to save uh, the ties. Let's look at it from the top side. Okay, here it is from the top side. I was able to get this uh, uh, piece of the uh, wood underneath it and uh, took out the, the foam as well. It was uh, ballasted under the track and I uh, was able to save the rails. Uh, they're undamaged and the, the ties look to be okay. Um, the new uncoupler is going to go up from underneath and um, it comes with a, a clear plastic cover as well. And then we can uh, just rebalance that and uh, should look fine. Okay, if you can see the line that kind of goes across that. That has to be parallel with the tracks. So I've installed the, this is the second one, I've installed the uh, uncoupler under the track. It comes with um, a couple little white brackets that uh, you just pre-drill for the screws and uh, the brackets hold it in place. Just kind of pressure fit on there. Um, you can still I can still rotate the uh, the uncoupler, make sure it's in the right position, and can't really see the lines through there, but the lines are pretty much parallel with the tracks there. So that's now in position, and now it's just a matter of wiring it up. Now to wire it up, it is quite tricky to get the LED working properly. Um, it does just take a 12 volt power supply, and um, I do have a power supply. A couple leads, where are they? On that little bus right there. And I'm just gonna wire it up to that. And um, yeah, that'll be the next step. I now have it installed. Um, as you can see, I got it working here. There you can see the blue light come on when it's activated. And under here, there's a mess of wires. Um, there's five wires going to the harness. That's the harness there. And they'll hook into the uh, 12 volt power supply. Now, one thing I'd like to recommend is um, before you hook up the LED for the panel, uh, I just use some alligator clips to hook up the two ends to the two connections. One goes to this harness up here and the other one goes to the 12 volt power supply. In the diagram 
that they give you there it is here they don't say what the plus and the minus is from the 12 volt power supply and you can see there's there's three wires that's the 12 volt power supply over here there's three wires going from one side and two from the other but I don't know which one's the plus and the minus so um, before you hook up the LED portion connect uh, just with alligator clips into this section here um, when I first hooked it up uh, to the uh, uncoupler I had to uh, it, it would work um, but this LED would not come on and that was because the I had the the plus and the minus reversed back at this section so I had to reverse the two wires here and so I got the LED working on the uncoupler but uh, this LED wasn't working and I had to switch the polarity of that LED um, into the connections to get it to work properly. So uh, before you hardwire everything in, basically hook it up with alligator clips and figure out the polarities um, to the wiring harness and then you'll be okay. So that's basically it, the two, there's just the section here clicks the LED on and back off and then ah, it's kind of hard to do with one hand but uh, that'll now connect into the the little panel that they give you uh, once I mount that here on the fascia that's about it so it's it's not too hard to do it's just a little tricky uh, hooking up the the wiring harness um, but it does uh, it does work pretty well uh, once you get the polarities figured out.